Let me show you how I make these baskets. So I've been making these baskets by modeling them up over a balloon and once they're leather hard we let the air out. This is kind of what you're left with. But I've made a bunch of them. The failure rate has been fairly high, and I'll show you uh, kind of what I've seen as I've built these things to look for. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is think about when the edge of this gets set down onto a table, don't stick it down onto something really shiny and clean. It's gonna stick, it's not gonna let it um, slip. So newspaper to me has worked the best to to, to give a slippy finish. Number two, these things are skinny and depending on your weather they're going to dry really quickly. So it's important that you keep an eye on when you should let the pressure out. It can be tempting to wait until it's dry enough, you're worried about it collapsing, but uh, I'd err probably on letting out the air in your balloon a little earlier than later. Your structure will take it, so that shouldn't be an issue. When I put this together, I don't slip and score these joints. And what it means is, is that the, the, they kind of move. The little pieces move and it, they are just really, really fragile. I've tried pinching them together, stamping them together, even, even tying little ties around the joints. Once you've gotten the balloon out, that is your biggest challenge, is to handle this thing carefully and get it into the bisque without breaking it. Once it's bisqued, they're pretty sturdy. And then the glaze ties everything together, but when they're bisqued, they're pretty sturdy. And I have not had much, I've had no problems in the way of clay movement once I get it into the bisque kiln. So they don't slouch or move. Uh, they will uh, when you glaze, but not when you're bisqueing. The worst failures that I've had have been loading the bisque kiln, either Picking these up to go take it to put in the kiln, they'll break, and they break instantaneously. Um, my worst, I had one probably twice as big, and I'm, I am loading it down into the kiln, and it went from a complete structure to 10,000 tiny pieces, just poof, and it rained down over a whole kiln load, and I had to unload the kiln and get all that out of there. Um, it's happened right in front of the kiln, on the gravel, um, but needless to say, that's kind of the sketchy point, is getting it into the kiln. And, the, and to me, the best way to do that is to make sure you assemble this really fast. The quicker you assemble this, the more they're stuck together. The ones I've had problems with are ones that were big builds, where I took a long time to extrude the pieces, and by the time I assembled it, the, what little stickiness was there just wasn't, wasn't enough. So, be careful when you're getting them into your bisque. Uh, the next piece is how do you glaze these things? So the glaze is kind of goopy. Like there's spots that I missed and that's because this was too big. It's shrunken now, but even still I couldn't fit this in a five gallon bucket. So I put it over a trash can lid and just ladled and poured the glaze over and went back and touched it up the best I could. And so that was just, I don't know. I wasn't really happy with it. The next question is, okay, now you got it glazed. I eventually made a big trash can full and I can dip the whole thing, so no more problems that way. But how do you put it in the kiln to fire? So the first ones I've done, and so I just wiped off the glaze and fired it mouth down on the shelf. And it worked great. And it did this one this, that way as well, where it sponged off. I don't know, it looks a little bit weird to me. I was hoping I could improve on that. So, I have done a few. This one as well, just had the tips all rubbed off. But I've done a few. Uh, in this case, this was uh, actually a, a few problem pieces. I made these three uh, with the intention of nesting them in the kiln. Um, because, as you can imagine, this takes up a lot of space. 
and so it would be really nice to be able to fire them nested and not touching. And so they went through the bisque nested perfectly, came out, I glazed them all, but this time I decided let me take some balls of wadding and I'll just put, I should have put more maybe, but I put three, kind of like you do uh, kilns, uh, the stilts in your kiln. And I just did not foresee it coming that the, I, mean, I don't know if you can really see, this right here, obviously no longer round, and it's because it kind of slipped off its little ball of wadding and actually flexed the whole thing. And it, it moved them all. It, every one of them, they touched and actually, so all three of these baskets have a, have a flat spot. Uh, I'm still going to put them to use. I think I'm going to bolt them to a wall or a post or something and we'll just put a burlap lining and put a plant in it and abuse it and see how it does with the weather. So be careful when you're glazing. They do move and I've had some really, really big ones move and twist and um, another thought is see this lower band here a lot of the ones I first made were kind of open wall like more like like this right it doesn't have kind of like another supporting band and this really does keep it from shifting as badly as it can if you don't have this ribbing so because I wanted to hang these I wanted to see about making the hanging hardware in ceramic of course and so this is kind of my winning style, but I started with this idea of maybe an S-hook and a double looped ring and then something like this. And so the thought was, you know, you add these all the way around and then each one of these gets a, an S-hook and it just ended up being a lot of hardware. So I didn't, I didn't think that doing the two piece was worth it and so a single eyelet and hook and increasing the kind of closing the mouth and making this hook deeper also really helped um, these S hooks kind of wanted to slip off the pot so making the, the hook a little deeper is really helpful but to me the key is having an offset eye you notice these aren't on the same plane it's not laying down sideways and that is because I want them when they're hung To be hooks out right so that way they can grab the pot and be really secure so that, that's the reason that these have a, a 90 degree offset between the eyelet and the hook and one one more little detail is I made several of these and I need to make some bigger ones in the right color <clears throat> but it's a single piece of clay that I've bent into a hook and, and two and then added an extra little bit of clay here. So really simple hand build, but here was the trick. I want to know that when I hang this on a hook that's in this direction, you know, either way, that these two here are spread out towards the viewing area. I don't want one of these rods to be in your line of view when you're looking at this pot hanging. I'd like it to be open to the front. So, just one thing to check if you care about such things. And you're making one of these hooks, make sure that you think about how it's gonna engage and whether or not it's gonna be open to the viewing area you, you want it to have, so. And I uh, made them both in a single half inch thick extrusion after firing is maybe 0.4 inches and then uh, a binding up of three smaller extrusions. I forget what the 0.3 inches or something like that, quarter inch probably. But just, you know, keeping three together gives you a little more texture. So one of the reasons that I started making the woven uh, bottom was because it's not where I started. And where I started was thinking about uh, these are slab rolled and simply cut with a needle tool and attached to a thrown base. And this one is probably the best of the ones in terms of failures. Uh, 
I had several before this, it just I didn't even make it through the process. This is not glazed, it is bisque fired, but there are two things that are seriously wrong with this. Number one, there are big cracks in the plate uh, corresponding to each rib, meaning that there was pressure one way or the other, a uh, differential between that maybe this was too thick, I'm not sure, but that's obvious problem number one. Problem number two, there's this little issue. What? This is what they do, they just completely separate and so my thinking is, well, if there's a, a problem because this is too, they're moving differently, maybe I should dry them differently. I candled them in the kiln for a long time, something like 10 hours, which normally I don't do uh, preheats or candling that long, but um, still problems. So once I went to something that had the same evenness all throughout, the cracking went away. And then of course letting it move uh, on that on that newspaper but yeah would have been cool except for that so I wanted to show you here's an example of a failure and man I was bummed <laughs> I was really bummed this looked so good that was nice and round very similar in shape to something like this it went well past the curve on the halfway point of the balloon it made it through bisking great, all the joints were tied. But you can see this is an example where I had these long sides. And you might be thinking, and you're probably right, that I could change my clay body to deal with some of this. I could also fire this, say, a cone lower for glazing, as long as the glaze matures. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if I really care if it's fired a cone four. We could check for durability, but... Uh, I do think that some of this can be overcome with better construction. So just realize that it's kind of like having a house with a bunch of 2 by 4s going up and down and no sheeting, no angles. Even the slightest breeze can knock it over. So, although it was pretty, that is a real bummer. That was at the top half of my kiln fire. So. I have made them, actually I made this with half inch extrusion because I made this one and this actually turned out great. Although it's a little off topic because I was making it, uh, forming it in the bottom of a barrel uh, to give it a nice wide, wide stance. So the idea being that you would maybe post mount this, again I'm thinking backyard, garden, outdoor applications, planting. Um, I, I also debated putting them on some sort of a, a base, but this one was made to bolt to a post and we're going to plant it. But again, more of this half inch extrusion, it's a nice thickness and I don't know, I think these are really fun. That's it, I'm going to go uh, put these up around the yard, uh, do a couple installations, I'll take some pictures and you get to see uh, how they're going to live for a little while. Thank you.